and she takes all her toys in there because if she leaves them uh, on the floor, then Carol's caregivers pick them up and they put them in the basket there. And then they put the basket up on top. I couldn't figure out what she was doing. She was jumping the other day, trying to get that off. All right, we're on. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another night's service. We we're going to have a, a pretty good night tonight. We're just mainly live streaming. Uh, the only ones that here is Tuck and I. And uh, so we're just going to take and have a good, uh, a good service tonight. And we had a great service this morning out at the windmill. And I just can't thank them enough for allowing us to uh, be out there. And tonight now we're going to take and I've got it at my house. And we're going to just take and mainly just live stream tonight. And I got a good message tonight. In fact, it's going to be kind of a continuation of the message from this morning. But it's a lot different. And um, I just hope everyone enjoys it. But um, before we start, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for today. We thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you most of all for sending your son down the cross for our sins. And Father, we just thank you for the opportunity of coming to church tonight. Thank you for being able to live stream. And Father, we just pray for those who aren't here tonight. We just pray, Lord, that you take and uh, be with them, guide them, and direct them. Everybody's had a busy week. We just pray now that you'll help and guide us in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, <clears throat> you want to sing a song? Which one? How about Christ is all I need? You know that one? Christ is all I need. Yeah. Okay. We're going to sing Christ is all I need. Just one verse. Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. All, all I need. Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. All, all I need. It was... For me, he died on Calvary. I can't remember the rest of it. <laughs> anyway, we were saying the first song, first hymn. Anyway, so, but uh, anyway, we uh, um, we got a lot going on this next week. We've got uh, tomorrow, we've got a lot of canned goods and stuff to get out of the ground box. We've got, we're going to make our office in there because it's cool. And they're going to come tomorrow. Bio uh, Sweep's going to come in tomorrow to start the uh, renovation of the of the uh, building. Uh, they're going to uh, start getting all the smoke smell out, which I am really going to be thankful for because uh, I brought a couple of my Bibles home and I'm taking them back tomorrow because they are so full of smoke that uh, even though they were closed, they're still, all the pages are completely full of smoke and you just can't uh, hardly stand it. So um, they're all going back tomorrow and we're going to see how well they can get all of the smoke smell out of uh, my Bibles and, and all of that. But um, if you're listening tonight, if you're live streaming, it's good to have you. And um, we're going to have a great night tonight. Um, but um, we're going to get right into the message because there's not a whole lot of announcements other than, you know, getting done at the church. And uh, hopefully why, by, by, I'm hoping to be back into the church the first weekend of uh, August. And so we'll have to wait and see how that time frame goes, uh, see how fast they can come in and get the smoke smell out and uh, get all the um, chairs cleaned up, pulpit cleaned up, piano cleaned up, um, the carpeting out and uh, new carpeting in. And, and so we've got a lot to do. And uh, we just uh, pray that God will help us to get through it all. And uh, then we can take and be back in, in church again. I can hardly wait. You know, it was bad enough to be away from church during the uh, pandemic. And then we have the fire and we got to be back away from church again. So we're going to take and hopefully we'll be back into a, a big, a nicer uh, church than what we had, uh, we're in now. Uh, because everything is going to be hopefully replaced and repainted. And, and it's going to be for God's honor and glory. It's not our church, it's his church. And he'll put it back the way that he wants it. And uh, so we just got to um, continue to uh, look at him for all of our guidance. If we do that, I guarantee that we're going to have a, one of the most beautiful churches in all of Florence. And uh, so, all right, I want you to take and turn your Bibles tonight, if you will, to the book of um, uh, Joshua. We're in Joshua chapter 1 this morning, and we're going to continue on into Joshua tonight. Um, 
I wrote a message this afternoon. It was not the message I was going to give today, but tonight, but it um, was a message that I felt that God wanted me to have. And um, I've got about seven uh, messages in the book of Joshua that I've written as I've been uh, reading through the book of Joshua. And uh, so if you turn your Bibles to Joshua chapter two tonight, um, and we'll start reading in verse number one, it says, and Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shushim two men to uh, spy secretly saying, go view the land, even Jericho. Uh, and they went and came into the, um, into, uh, into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho saying, behold, there came men uh, in thither um, to tonight of the children of Israel to search out our country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab saying, bring forth these men that are um, come to thee, which are entered into thine house for they be come to search out all the country. <clears throat> and the women and the, and the woman uh, took of the two men and hid them uh, and, and said thus, whence they uh, were. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for all you've done for us. Thank you for this message tonight. I pray that you'll take and use it for your honor and glory. We love you. We thank you for what you've done for us. We just pray now we'll get something out of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of tonight's message is The Scarlet Thread. The Scarlet Thread. And as I was uh, going through the book of, um, of Joshua, uh, this story really stuck out in my mind. And, um, and I want to I wanna show you why uh, this story stuck out in my mind so much. But <clears throat> here we see that, um, hang on just a second. I gotta turn on one light. There we go, all right. That's that better. Now I can see. I get back in here and then there's a shadow and I can't see my notes. Uh, but you know, this morning we saw how God had prepared a uh, leader um, to go and to lead the children of Israel after Moses had died. Um, we saw that God had three times told him to uh, be strong and be of good courage. Tonight, I want to look at how God uses different people to fulfill his work that he wants to get done. In this, uh, in tonight's message, we're going to be looking at at uh, chapter two of the book of Joshua a little bit. And I believe that God can use anyone of his choosing to fulfill his will uh, uh, to be done. People do not have to be a certain, um, of a certain ethnic group, uh, or they don't have to be of a certain color. They don't have to be a certain race uh, to be used by God and for his purpose. But now what I wanna look at is this. Uh, there was those who were sent. You know, there were those who were sent. If you look at verse 1 again in Joshua chapter 2, it says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shifton uh, two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. Now, if you take and you look at that part of the verse, you'll see that that. Joshua is telling these two men to go and view um, Jericho. Now, what was so important about Jericho? Jericho, the first city that the children of Israel were going to conquer on their quest for the promised land. That was the first city that was in their way. That was the first city that they had to go through before uh, they were going to take and have the promised land. But there was mistakes made in the first time the um, the spies went into the promised land. If you remember back in the book of Exodus, um, or the book of, um, let's see, Exodus, Deuteronomy, you'll see that that um, when Josh, when uh, Moses sent 12 spies into Canaan land, what, hap what happened? 
10 came back with a bad report and two came back with a good report. The only two that came back with a good report was Joshua and Caleb. Now, here we see that Joshua only picks two men, just two. He didn't take 12. He only took two men to go into Canaan. He did not want to have the division that there was with Moses. Um, uh, Joshua only had the um, the, the uh, two men go uh, to spy out the, the uh, town of, of Jericho. And, and now what we need to realize is that the people, after they had went into the promised land the first time, they had to wander in the wilderness 40 years because they did not trust God to do what he said he could do. They had to go 40 years in the wilderness. Have you ever thought about why Joshua only picked two guys? I did. I thought about that. And I thought, well, you know what? If they both came back with the same report, that they won't have any problem taking it. They'll just go in and they'll do what God wanted to and they will, they'll take the land. Joshua was thinking about the 40 years that he had already spent in the wilderness. He knew that God had punished the people for 40 years because of the bad report that was given the first time they went into uh, Canaan. He knew that it was 40 years of wandering in the wilderness that God made them do. Everyone from eight years old and up were no longer living. They were all dead. They were all dead. They, uh, none of them were living anymore. So here we see that, that Joshua saying to himself, if that happens again, and we have to wander another 40 years in the wilderness, I will not be able to go in to the promised land. I will not be able to take and see the land of promise. <clears throat> now, no doubt Joshua was uh, thinking of everything that could happen have the report came back poorly. And now we see that Joshua sends two spies, just two, to the promised land to uh, uh, spy it out. You know, he told them exactly what to do. He says, I want you to go spy the land and the city of Jericho. I want you to go spy out the land to see if there's any garrisons in the land that we may have to take out before we get to Jericho. Maybe there's uh, some garrison somewhere along the way and we have to take them up. I want you to spy the land and the city of Jericho. And he was very specific in what he wanted done. And they, um, were, they were given a task to do. You know, many times God gives us instructions of what we need to do and how we need to do them. But many times we don't do exactly what God wants us to do. Oh, we'll say, you know what, I can do it my way. I can do it this way or that way or anything else. You know, in this remodel project, I mean, there's a lot of things that I could do differently than what I know is going to be done. However, I'm not the one that's paying for it. The insurance company is. So I'm going to let them do uh, their what they feel is best to do. The second thing is this. They surrendered to go. They surrendered to go. Look at it again in verse 1. It says, and they went. And they went. <clears throat> you know, here God uses two young men to go and to spy a land that they'd never been in before. They had never been around Jericho before. They'd never been around the, the country of Jericho before. Here was a land that they had never been to. Here was a land that, that uh, they had never seen before. Um, they did not know anyone in Jericho. They knew no one, not one person did they know in Jericho. They had never uh, been in that part of the, the country before. You know, they did not know if they would ever come back alive. After all, if they got caught, they could very easily have been put to death. However, these two went. You know, look what it says. And they went. Did you notice that they didn't argue? Did you notice that they 
didn't try to talk back to uh, Joshua. All it says is, and they went. You know, when we are given a command from God, we need to just go and do it. I can remember when God called me to be pastor of Florence Baptist Church. We were in Wisconsin. We had no idea where God wanted us. We had no idea what we were going to do. Um, Mrs. Storm was down here with uh, my mom and my stepdad, and she was doing so much better health-wise. So we believed that this is where God wanted us. But we had no idea where God wanted us down here in Arizona. After all, Arizona's hot, especially in the summertime. And we had no idea where God wanted us. But I still went. I still went to where God wanted me to go. And that's how we started Florence Baptist Church. You know, God used two young men to go um, and spy out a land that they had never seen before. They were going to represent the children of Israel in what was going to happen later on. We need to realize that Joshua had to have an awful lot of, of uh, respect for these two men. Do you notice one thing in this? What do you notice in that that we read? Who are the men? They never mentioned it. No one was ever mentioned. They were not. All we know is they were two men. They weren't Joshua and they weren't Caleb. They were just two men. We don't know what tribe they were of. We don't have any idea who they were or anything else. All we know was that there was two spies. That's it. We have no idea who it was. God didn't feel that was important to put in the Word of God. We have no idea who these two guys were. You know, they weren't doing this for a fanfare. They weren't doing this so that when they came back, there'd be banners raving and there'd be a parade and everything else, just praising them for them going into a country that they had not knew nothing about and spying out that country. They were doing it for the honor and glory of God. You know, God does not want us to have a fanfare when we do something for him. You know, we'll get our reward in heaven. We don't need our reward here on earth. The third thing is this. They came into a harlot's home named Rahab. <clears throat> if you take a look also at verse 1 there, it says, and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. You know, no doubt these two were told that there was a, a house that they could possibly stay in. Maybe someone along the way, they might have asked someone that was passing by, hey, do you know if there's a motel or hotel in, in uh, Jericho that we might be able to spend a couple days in? And they said, yeah, go over here to Rahab's house and, and uh, you can probably stay and stay there. Now, we need to realize what the occupation of Rahab was. Rahab was a prostitute. Rahab was a harlot. You know, she was um, among one of the oldest professions known to anywhere. Prostitution. And uh, she was no doubt uh, was well known in the city, especially by the men. I'll bet there was not a man in Jericho who did not know who Rahab was or may have had dealings with her. You know, these two men um, came into her house to lodge there. Now, they needed to have somewhere to stay. They needed a central point where they could take and find out what was going on in the city of Jericho and the surrounding area. What better place to go than to a prostitute's house. After all, they would know just about everything that's going on. Now, we need to realize that uh, there's many commentators who feel that this house was not really a house, that it was more of an inn or a small hotel or a rooming house. And what it was is that, that people would come, they're traveling through, they would stop there, they would spend the night, they'd be able to get uh, some dinner or whatever, breakfast, and they'd be able to have a good night's sleep before 
they went on in their journey. Now, I believe that's kind of what this was. I believe that this was uh, uh, a place where they could go and they could rest. And uh, that was kind of like the Holiday Inn of that era. Well, I think it was a little more than that. And uh, uh, so, but here we see number four is this. Um, the spies were sought after. The spies were sought after. Look at verse, um, chapter 2, verse 3. It says, And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into the, thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. You know, the king of Jericho found out that there was two guys that came in. And it was told to him that they could have been bought from the Hebrews or from the Israelites. And he says, I want to see these two because I want to prove them. I want them to tell me everything that I want to know. And he would have found out one way or another. Even if it meant taking their life, he would have found out from them exactly why they were there. You know, the king of Jericho uh, wanted to find these two. So he went to, to uh, Rahab and he says, where are these two? Where are these two that came in? There was two. When people come visiting in a town, everybody knows it. Everybody knows that they're strangers in town. When I grew up, we, we lived in a real small town. It was called Pioli. And uh, there was maybe 60 people there counting the dogs and cats. And um, it seemed like whenever somebody had company, everybody else in town knew it. Well, it was no different in Jericho. Here were these two men that came in. They maybe were dressed different than everybody else. They maybe talked different than everybody else. They maybe walked different than everybody else. We have no idea, but everyone knew that they were strangers and that they were from the children of Israel. Now, the king was going to great lengths trying to find these two men. I'm sure that he took his armies into Rahab's house and he just tore that house apart trying to find these two men. <clears throat> Rahab deceived for the spies. Rahab deceived for the spies. In verse uh, chapter 2, verse 6, it says, And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I uh, wert not whence they were. You know, she had to think fast. She had to use her mind very quickly and come up with an answer for the king. After all, the king wanted them dead, is what he wanted. He did not want them to spy out Jericho. He did not want them to spy out the land. He wanted them dead so that they could no, go, not go back to the uh, children of Israel and tell them what they found. You know, the king knew why these two spies were there. <clears throat> he knew that, that um, it was the only... Oh, it would be only a matter of time before the Israelites would be coming uh, after Jericho. He had heard of the stories of how the uh, Israelites were in captivity in Egypt and how that Pharaoh let them go. He heard stories of how they got to the Red Sea and the Red Sea opened up and they went across on dry ground. He heard stories of how they went up to Horeb and billions of gallons of water come gushing out of the rock at Horeb. He, he knew of the manna that they picked up every morning to eat. He knew of the armies and that they'd already uh, overrun on the other side of the Jordan. He, had, he knew all this, and he had heard of the things that they were doing, and he knew that they were coming that way. He knew that they were going to take and overthrow Jericho one day. And he did not want that to happen. And he wanted to find them. And he wanted to take and get rid of them as quickly as he possibly could. 
<clears throat> the king was going to all that he used all of his power to try to find those two spies. He didn't care what it took. He was going to find those two spies. But you know, they found safety. They found safety. In Joshua chapter 2, verse 6, it says, But she, meaning Rahab, had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid uh, in order upon the roof. Here we see that Rahab had uh, taken them up to the roof of the house. And there was bundles of, of flax all over the roof. And what they were doing, they were drying so that um, they could beat them out and get all the flax seed out of them. They could take that flax seed, they could beat it out, and they could use it for food. That's what was going on on the roof of Rahab's house. There was thousands of, of uh, these bundles of, of uh, flax all over. And they were hiding amongst those bundles of flax. I can remember when I was a young boy, well, not too young, maybe my teenage years, we had farmers around where we live that used to shock corn and shock wheat. And what they would do is they would make bundles in the field of wheat and of corn. And uh, my friends and I, we would take and go out at night and we would go shocking. And what we'd do is we'd run and then we'd dive into these things and knock them over. And, and um, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't really nice to do. But one night we got caught and my dad gave me the worst whooping I think I've ever had. And um, I had to take and go not only and stand up all the shocks that we had knocked over, but he made me go and shock a whole field all by myself. Shocking wheat is one of the hardest jobs there are. You have to take a bundle of it and you have to take and tie a string around the top of it and pull it tight and you got to tie it and you have to do it quickly because that machine that's cutting it is just keep on going and you have to stay up behind it. And it's very, very difficult. And you know, that was the last time I ever went shocking. That was the last time I ever went and, and knocked any of those over. But this is what it reminded me of. It reminded me of all these shocks up on top of this roof and these guys hiding inside of them so that they wouldn't be found. But you know, they found safety with Rahab. Rahab knew if uh, she could hide them that they would be safe, that they would not die, that they would not be caught by the, um, by the king. You know, I can... I know many times that in my life, I need safety, you know, and God is the only way that we can have safety. You know, Rahab um, struck a deal with the spies. You know, Rahab was a very good businesswoman, believe it or not. She was a very good businesswoman. And uh, I think she may have made a lot of money in her profession. But here we see that she struck a deal with the spies. And here was the deal that she struck in uh, Joshua chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. It says, Now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will um, also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token and that ye may save alive my father and my mother and all my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death rahab knew what was going to happen when the israelites came to jericho rahab knew that the city was going to be totally destroyed Rahab knew, should be, I think, uh, um, um, Norm. Um, but Rahab knew exactly what was going to happen. Rahab knew, Lucy. Rahab knew that if, if she was not saved, she would surely die. You know, these two spies had really no choice 
than to do business with her. These two spies had no uh, no other recourse than to take and do what she asked them to do. After all, they had to get out of Dodge. They had to get out of Jericho. Uh, you know, the king was after them, and he wanted to kill them. Uh, they had uh, no one else uh, to uh, trust other than Rahab. They had uh, to show um, how they were kind of between a rock and a hard place. You know, they had no way of getting out, none other than trusting a prostitute. Now, I don't know if I would put my life's trust in that or not. However, they did. They did do that. They put their life's trust in that. You know, they struck a deal with Rahab and told her if she uh, would not tell the king of their whereabouts, that they would save her and all of her family. But you know, they were saved. You know, she let them down um, out of the window on a red scarlet rope. Now, this is how God works many times. You know, look at where her house was located. Her ho house was located on the, I can't find my Bible. I oh, can't find it. Oh, here it is. Uh, if you take a look at verse 15, I got to get back to it. I knew there was one verse I needed to read and I couldn't remember which one it was. Joshua chapter 2 and verse 15, it says this. <clears throat> oh, there's one, two. Um, nope, that's not it. That's four. Here we go. Two, 15. There we are. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall now the thing i find so interesting about this is look where her house was her house was on the outside wall of jericho her house bordered the wall all they had to do is be let down from the roof and they were free she made a rope a scarlet rope out of red and she let them down off of the roof and uh, um so here we see that they were they were saved by a scarlet rope now <clears throat> you know they may not have been the first time that she had ever used this attempt there could have been other times where she may have let other people down off of her roof trying to escape from their wives or someone else or whatever. But she knew just exactly what to do. She knew just where to tie that rope. She knew just exactly how long that rope had to be. And here we see that that she let them down uh, off of her roof. You know, there was a very good sign that was given. In Joshua chapter two and verse 18, it says, behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt uh, bind um, this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by. And they shall bring thy father and thy mother and thy brothers and all thy father's household unto thee. This scarlet line needed to be hung from the window so that it could be their salvation. You know, as I was thinking about this, when the children of Israel came to the city, um, this was the red line was sitting there and it showed them exactly where Rahab lived. You know, they did not know the significance of this scarlet red rope 
or scarlet red thread, as it talks about in the Bible. But, <clears throat> it, you know, how later it would be through the red blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that you and I are saved from our sins. It was through what he did, the finished work that he did on the cross, so that you and I could have redemption for our sins. You know, it's the same today as what it was back then. We need to come through the red blood of the Lord Jesus, just like they had to go down that red cord in order to escape for their salvation. And for Rahab to hang that down there for her and her family's salvation. You know, all the way back in the beginning of time, God had to shed blood in order to cover Adam and Eve's sin, didn't he? You know, the Bible says that he made them coats of skin. Where did he get the skin? He had to kill animals in order to make them clothes. We need to realize it's only through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that you and I can have salvation. You know, it could have been any other color, couldn't it have? It could have been a blue one. It could have been a maroon one. It could have been a yellow one. It could have been any other color, orange. But it was red, scarlet red, the same as what the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is. But you know, Rahab was rewarded for her deeds. Rahab was rewarded for her deeds. In Joshua chapter 6 and verse 25, 